The Lightner system is a powerful variation on flashcards that is sadly not as well known as it could be. To my knowledge, that's partly because Sebastian Lightner's book has never been translated into English. And if you've seen an English translation, please let me know. But all hope is not lost. I read German and, you know, partly in thanks to modifying the Lightner method, I'm able to read German. So let me explain everything that I've learned about it to you in this video. And that way you'll know whether or not the Leitner approach to learning is right for you. Frankly, I think it's one of the best ways to get the most out of spaced repetition. It fuses seamlessly with other learning techniques like the memory palace and mind mapping. And so if you love explorations like this, make sure to get subscribed, hit that thumbs up. It's an incredibly way to learn faster. And that's what we do on this channel week after week, month after month, year after year. And I can only do that because of you helping the robots remember that we humans still care about the power of the unassisted mind. Because as cool as it is to have robots and AI personal assistants and all that jazz, it's even cooler to be able to function at your best if the power goes out and you don't have access to them at all. So what is the Leitner system? Well, as you probably know, spaced repetition is a cornerstone of having an optimized learning method. You really need that in your toolbox. And Sebastian Leitner, like many people in the accelerated learning space, wanted to find ways to reduce the amount of repetition required. But he wanted to do it without sacrificing comprehension or long-term memory. And let me tell you, long before technology, there are all kinds of people who have cooked up all kinds of systems that actually do not create that outcome. They may give you a feeling of gamification that feels rewarding at the time, but it ultimately is empty calories. It doesn't lead to better comprehension and it doesn't lead to long-term memory formation. So along with many other luminaries of learning like Barbara Oakley, Tony Buzan, like myself, Leitner is really passionate about learning faster due to inadequacies in the publication education system. As he says in the opening of his book, So Learned Man Learn which I guess would be translated something like, that's how you learn how to learn. It was an anger that drove Leitner to find a better way. And the Leitner system is basically a means of organizing your Zettelkasten or flashcards in a way that reduces the forgetting curve and optimizes retention and understanding. Now, the Leitner system is a bit old fashioned in some minds because it is literally physical cards, and these are used in old-fashioned boxes. But even as old-fashioned as that seems, there's a rising return to these older methods because digital is not fulfilling its promises for so many people. It might feel more engaging, but it's leading people to forget more. I use cards, and I use it not because of some special convenience. I use them because they work and I do indeed store them in shoeboxes. Yes, it takes up a bit more space than I would like, but when I was in grad school, we didn't even really have the kinds of space repetition software that we have now, but even now that we do, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because of how mental imagery works and a one-to-one -one correspondence between where information exists in the world and where it is stored in the brain. And if you're interested in more about that, please check out my video on mental imagery because it will give you some of the reasons scientifically about how that works and how to think about mental imagery a little bit better. So the Leitner space repetition system is helping you in this regard, but also manage your exposure to the information by having a accuracy model. So what you do is you place your flashcards in boxes, and then you rotate them throughout time by essentially scoring yourself on how accurately you remember what is on those cards. So one of the most important points of the Leitner method is that it provides a form of self-testing, and it is going to have a little bit of a different level of integration than a space repetition app, right? It's a mechanism for optimizing space repetition, but it also gets you to think critically. So for example, Leitner calls the idea of an intelligent quotient monstrous, and he finds the signs of genius in what a person does, not to be some kind of scientific measurement, but how that you produce an outcome with 
absolute honesty. And a lot of these softwares, they help you cheat. They show you the answer when you tap and then you can say, yeah, I remembered it perfectly. And you give yourself a score from one to five. But by doing this manually, the Leitner method helps you schedule the information, but also you can more easily hide the answer from yourself on the cards. So on the back of the cards, I typically have no information. Or if I do write an answer on the back of the card, I'll have a little bit of a puzzle. So I'll leave a blank space in the answer. So I have to guess. And it's just much faster to do that. Yes, you can do that on software, but it's much faster by hand to do it. And so then when rotating your cards throughout the boxes, you're doing it in a way that just requires more integrity, basically. And you are going to have more integrity because of the manual approach, whereas software has this sort of convenience. Yes, no, five, four, three, two, one, whatever you score yourself. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just more hands-on. It's more involved, which leads to more deliberate practice. You have to be more deliberate about it. And that's going to have framing effects that cause you to take more ownership and get more out of the ownership. So there's lots of studies around this, but you've got to be you and your mileage may vary, but I would suggest you're going to get a heck of a lot more out of it. Now, there's different parts here to the Lightner system. Scheduling is one of them, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. But one of the ways to get the most out of this is just to simply understand that it's a visual method. It's visible in your environment if you let it be visible. So I would suggest that you get your boxes and you put them somewhere where you always are going to see them day after day. I keep my cards in the open where I can see them and that helps me enjoy extra exposure without forgetting about them in a digital app or in a folder on a computer. Physical index cards arranged in the environment, not just in boxes. This is a key to this. Also, this works with things like journaling. The journal needs to be on the desk and I keep it open to the page that I'm working on and there's a memory palace right on this on a project that I'm working on right now and I come to it day after day after day. This is a reminder. If that was buried in a phone, I would forget about it. And if it was a notification, I would be much more likely to dismiss it and say, oh, I'll do that later. Physical objects that you've invested in, they are just so much more likely to get used. And when they're in the environment that you work in day after day, then you're just going to get so much more out of it. Now, in terms of how you organize your box and you place your cards in them, basically the idea is, is you would separate it in time. So if this is day one and you got the answer correct, you would move it to day five and then you would move it to day four, day three, day two, day one, or some sort of arrangement like that. You can do it in many, many different ways, but essentially the idea is that you are manually giving yourself revision of the information, repetition of the information, but test it, test it. Don't give yourself the answer. I have to look at this card and I have to go, why do I have an I here? Why do I have a coffee cup that has some sort of nuclear sign on it there? What am I trying to remember? And this is when I was learning the IPA, for example, the symbols in the IPA. And then I go, oh, OK. And with no answer on the back, I have to figure it out. And I go, uh, well, that must be indicating a, a, a long E and then coffee and bean. You know, that that's must be what that symbol is. It's not a nuclear symbol. Now, I use a memory palace and not this system as much as I used to back in the day. But the Leitner system basically would be exposure over time. So if this is segmented over five days, if I get that answer correct without a mistake, then I'm going to move it back to day five. But if I have a mistake, I'm going to move it to day two. So that's literally going to come again tomorrow, right? Otherwise, it's going to come five days from now. And then the idea is, is the cards progress towards the front and that's where you do the most review at the front and then the things that need more attention they are closer to the front and things that need less attention are further to the back and it is manual but it's very very effective and that's essentially how you schedule with a lightner box another great thing about lightner boxes is that you can use interleaving and that means you can distribute your cards through multiple boxes and study multiple topics at the same time and get the benefit of essentially switching topics back and forth 
which you know I have a video on interleaving that you can check out on this channel that will go more into the idea of switching between topics. But let's just say for now you're studying biology, you can distribute your review sessions throughout one box for that topic. Then in another box, you can study chemistry. And as you rotate between the topics, you're giving yourself the benefits of diffuse thinking and interleaving. This basically helps rewire your brain in order to start using this technique automatically. You almost come to crave it, and you come to crave it all the more so because you develop your procedural memory around it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. But you need to work out the testing regimes for yourself. And that's one of the seductions of software, is that it's going to try to figure out an algorithm for you based on your responses. Whereas here, you can basically test yourself and most of us, if we have integrity to the process, we're going to have better radical honesty when we have to do it manually, when we invest that way. Anyway, this is all kind of like how water percolates through coffee grounds to produce delicious drinks. And it's going to give your brain time to percolate the knowledge so that you can create wisdom and you're going to do it for multiple topics. So not just one box, but multiple Leitner boxes. It's really, really powerful. And there are other ways to use this. So let's look at things like tackling other kinds of information, the steps. Now let's look at a couple of other nuances here and try to find how we can use little granular details to create bigger levers that cause us to enjoy better outcomes. In other words, we're going to try to find the hinges that swing the biggest doors. And this concept is in Leitner's book. He uses the term in German, Selbstversuch, which means self-experiment. The science of learning is quite clear, but you really need to not just look at what the science says, but do a Selbstversuch, experiment on yourself. So these are some of the different things that I've done that I hope will help you give yourself the basis for experimentation, but remember that you need to be doing the experimentation. So I create my own cards, and the simplest way to do this is on index cards or recipe cards. You can get them at the grocery store or a discount shop, and you can get them even more inexpensively online, but you gotta buy them in bulk that way, and it's worth it. But here's another little thing about creating them myself. I always try to remember, I don't always do it, but I always try to remember to incorporate multiple colors in the cards. This is something that I picked up from Tony Buzan, who, for whatever reason, I never asked him why he has this idea in mind mapping that you should have at least a minimum of three colors. But I think part of it has to do with interleaving and the effects of diffuse thinking. When you are just taking that little pause to reflect on what color you're going to use next, you're giving your mind a bit of a chance to percolate. So it's just something that I've come into the habit of, and I really find that I get better results when I do it. Your mileage may vary. Now, another thing that I've already mentioned, but let's go into it a little bit deeper, is to have a little bit of a puzzle to solve. Now, why? This has to do with what's called active recall. Active recall has at least three main characteristics. The first is that you want to personalize everything. And you're going to do that when you're using memory techniques well. You're going to personalize each and every part of it because when I'm thinking about, you know, coffee beans to remember that a particular symbol means like a long E, well, I'm very, very big fan of coffee. <laughs> so I've personalized it and I'm actually thinking on that card of a specific cafe and that's the cafe that I have used in order to be able to use a memory palace. So when I'm thinking of, you know, how am I gonna remember that this symbol has a long E as opposed to a short sound, right? I'm going to personalize it. So I personally like coffee a lot, but also I personally use my favorite cafe right now as the memory palace. And this level of personalization brings so much more according to the science of recall, but also practically. Now, another part of active recall is that we want to have variety. 
So some people worry that having all these cards and so forth is going to create a mental mess. It's actually quite the opposite. You need to be able to get variety in order to maximize these effects. It's really, really important. And so lean into variety, even if it stretches you in the beginning. And the third big point about Active Recall is giving yourself a puzzle to solve. So if you have a card like this and you're going, okay, so I got a cow here and a sheep and there's some kind of weird drawing here at the bottom, cow and sheep, cow, sure, which means test basically. Well, if I was feeling like I needed to give myself a bit of a clue, rather than give myself the answer on the back of this card, it has a little blank line there and it says cow pushes a sheep to blank his strength. So cow sure means test, to test his strength. This in Active Recall is going to help you form a memory faster because you're not feeding yourself the information. That's boring rote repetition and rote repetition has been shown to reduce critical thinking. So here we may have repetition by progressing this card through the Lightner box but we're getting a amount of actual creative repetition because we have to get involved. And that's part of how you do it. You don't feed yourself the complete answer. Brilliant, isn't it? Now let's get into more granular details on scheduling. I would suggest that you start with the classical Leitner method of either five days or eight days. If you need more, you can change your box by creating different segments within it. Personally, I like to try to combine in my use of the Leitner box without referring to the box at all, just doing it purely in the mind. This is why I use a memory palace in conjunction with the cards. So when it comes to Kaushir here, this isn't just on a card and it isn't just stored in a box. It's also in a memory palace. That way, while I'm walking around, I'm able to just say, okay, what were the words that I learned? And think in the memory palace, where was that? And I also can think where in the box was it? So now I've got a kind of triangulation. I've got my mind, I've got the memory palace, and I've got the Leitner box. And this means that you can take it with you, essentially. Now there's no magic number about how often you have to revisit the information. Basically in language learning, as long as you're reading, writing, speaking, and listening frequently, that repetition number will go down. But if you're not, it will go up. And you really just have to pick your goal, right? You have to accurately assess your own goal. And I would suggest how that you schedule your amounts of exposure to the information as they go through the box is up to you to really figure out what's working for you. And I would just suggest that all information isn't equal. You want to take it as it goes. Like Bruce Lee says, be water, my friend. Very, very important. So it's going to be something where you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn how to optimize it as you go. See each mistake as yet another opportunity to learn. And selbstversuch, right? Experiment on yourself. This is what we really, really need to do. Now, Another nuance here is that just bringing the information to your mind, figuring out the answer mentally, is not enough to form memories as fast as you can. To accelerate the learning process, sit down, bring the answer to mind, and then write it out, speak it out. This gives you more levels of mental processing as you self-test, and it creates more connective webbing in your mind than just rote learning and raw repetition ever will. This is the equivalent of extending your learning to multiple levels of mental elaboration. It's very, very important. And if you want more on how to do this, make sure you take my free course at magneticmerrymethod.com. It is going to help you learn how to use the memory palace optimally so that it can be just as optimizable by you as you personalize it to your own learning goals, and then use it for long enough to really enjoy the benefits. And if you don't like free courses, just dive in and get the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. That's cool too. Learning really is like programming, and it's important to realize that no great software, no great technique, nothing is written overnight. 
but you can learn this technique overnight. And in some ways, learning is not like programming. The analogy works, but learning is as organic as possible. And you can treat your world as like a garden. So a garden on an app, right, is not as fun to engage with as getting your fingers in the soil. And that's why I like these physical boxes. You're not so much programming yourself as you are tending to the garden of your mind and the garden of your world, your life. You're optimizing your environment so that every point is highlighted with you and your goals and your ability to focus on getting things done. You don't forget to do what you've committed to do. And that culminates in better memory. So if you want to learn more about the technique that we talked about interleaving, make sure to stick around and watch my video on interleaving next.